Right, let's uh, get straight into the leading story. The Peter Maritzburg High Court will rule next week on submissions made by the legal teams of State Prosecutor Advocate Billy Downer and journalist Karen Morn that former President Jacob Zuma's private prosecution of them be removed from the role of the Peter Maritzburg High Court. Now, the 9th of April was initially set down as a holding date for the matter. Zuma's legal counsel requested for postponement on this matter, citing a pending appeal at the Constitutional Court, while legal representatives of both Downer and Morn asked the court to strike the matter off the roll. Zuma's lawyers told the court that despite a number of adverse rulings against their client in his quest to have advocate Downer removed as prosecutor in his criminal case, he still can appeal those decisions at the apex court. Previous rulings by the High Court and the Supreme Court of Appeal declared Zuma's private prosecution as an abuse of process. The matter returns to court next Wednesday. Now, former President Jacob Zuma has won his appeal against the Electoral Commission's decision to disqualify his candidature in the 2024 polls. In an order issued earlier, the Electoral Court set aside the IEC's decision to uphold an objection against Zuma's candidature. The Electoral Court has not yet furnished reasons behind its order. The IEC is expected to publish the final candidate list tomorrow. The Imkwanto Wesizwe political party headed to the Electoral Court on Monday and argued that the constant constitutional law which bars one from being a member of the National Assembly if they are convicted of an offence and sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment without the option of a fine did not apply to former President Jacob Zuma. It further argued that the former president was not convicted of an offence and that the IEC failed to take the remission of his 15-month sentence into account. Now, the Electoral Commission says it has taken note of the contents of Electoral Court orders. Furthermore, have noted that the orders were issued without reasoned judgment. The IEC says in order to understand the basis of the conclusion reached, it's important that reasons are provided to discuss this matter further. We're now joined by IEC Chief Electoral Officer Sai Mamabolo. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. You received two orders from the Electoral Court today, the first being around the candidacy of former President Jacob Zuma, and I believe you're now asking for the reasons behind the orders to be given. Indeed, um, we are. Um, we, we, we instructed council teams to, to seek those reasons. It is, I think, um, only natural that we seek the reasons so that we can understand the, the rationale and the, uh, the reason that the court followed in arriving at the conclusions they have and the orders issued. Um, in the meantime, um, we will uh, implement that which the court um, requires us to uh, in terms of those issued orders. Are you considering an appeal in this matter as yet, or is it a matter of just getting an understanding of, of the reasoning behind the decision? Well, at the moment, um, there are no decisions um, relating to appeals. Uh, firstly, we, we have to understand um, the basis on which the court arrived at the, at the decisions it has. And once we, we understand that, um, then at that point, the considerations can be made uh, relative to uh, appeals. At this stage, it would be really premature uh, to, uh, to, to give an indication of appeal absent um, a full judgment on the matter. In your view, what do you think the impact of, of the Electoral Court's decision has on the South African political landscape? Well, court are, are a necessary a component of any democratic reality because you do need those institutions that are empowered constitutionally uh, to adjudicate disputes that may arise. Um, and to the extent that uh, there were disputes or um, a difference of interpretation of law, uh, courts are available for that purpose. So. We, they've played their role. It's a role that we have a, a great respect for. 
And um, we're good that uh, the disputes are resolved and it creates the basis to go forward. We should never come to a conclusion that uh, if a court has made a finding, it means a democracy is going all right. That's, that's not the case. Courts are part of the institutional architecture of any democratic society. Yeah. You, you speak about being furnished with the reasons uh, of, of this order being made. Uh, and you say that irrespective of, of when you get these reasons, uh, what needs to go ahead will indeed go ahead as planned. What, what will you be looking out for as you get the reasons uh, behind this decision? And how imperative is it for you to be furnished with these reasons? No, it is quite imperative because um, it, it's not just about the, uh, the litigants in this matter. Uh, judgments also create law, by the way. So to the extent that they create law, um, they may uh, have binding effect on uh, future elections, for instance. So to the extent that uh, clarity is required so that in, in, in years to come, those who will come after us may have a clear understanding of what the interpretation uh, that was given, what, was, uh, what informed such interpretation, so that mistakes um, don't uh, occur even in future uh, electoral events. So it's important that we understand the rationale that lies behind the decision. Yeah. So, so in the meantime, you're saying that you're going to publish the final candidates list tomorrow. Is that um, set to happen? Indeed, we've got to, um, to, to respect the provisions of the election timetable. So tomorrow, in terms of the timetable, we will finalize the final list of parties together with the candidates um, that are nominated by those parties as well as the independent candidates who have successfully uh, made their submissions. But, but we know, um, and Dr. Mama Bolo, that this is not the first time that you've dealt with a case similar to this. Um, in 2009, there was an objection against the candidacy of Mama Winnie Mandela, and the Electoral Court also dismissed uh, the objection and allowed her to become uh, a candidate. And that matter was not appealed. Does that now set some basis for what decisions will happen once you've been furnished with the reasons going forward in this specific matter? No, no, no. The two matters are completely different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ms. Um, Mandela's case, um, her sentence was wholly suspended. Um, this was not the case. Um, in the present matter. So uh, that comparison is not helpful. Yeah. Um, and it cannot be the basis upon which uh, decisions are going to be made. Let's, let's, um, let's get the reasons of court. Let, let's understand the rationale uh, on which the court relied to reach each conclusion. And at that point, then the commission will make uh, decisions as to how it wants to proceed on the matter. It may well be the case that it says, on the basis of what is before them, there's no need to take the matter further. Mm -hmm. Very well. Thank you so much for your time. Let's perhaps leave it there for now. IEC's Chief Electoral Officer, Sai Mamabolo, there speaking to us uh, about the outcome of the Electoral Court's decision today, saying that uh, what needs to happen is for the reasons to come forward and that a decision cannot be made prematurely as to whether or not there is consideration around an appeal. So this is a matter that we will be watching very closely.